Hello my loves, it's Monica and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because today I'm going to be sharing a bunch of cozy books that I think you should pick up this fall. I know autumn is swiftly approaching so I really wanted to share some of the books that I've loved that I think would be the perfect fit for all of your autumnal TBRs. So when it comes to cozy books, I feel like there's really two main types of cozy literature. The first is when the books themselves are are cozy. You know, they're wholesome, they're low stakes, and they kind of feel like a warm hug in book form. The second type are the books in which you get cozy in order to read. They are maybe a little bit darker, a little bit eerier, still nothing like too dark. They're the kind of books that you kind of want to be under a blanket while it's raining outside to read. So in this video I'm going to be talking about both types and giving some suggestions depending on what you're looking for so hopefully you'll find something wonderful in this video but before i dive in i do want to give a big thank you to this video's sponsor which is book of the month and book of the month is a super popular and fast-growing online book service for readers and their mission is to promote new and emerging authors while helping readers discover books they'll love the way that it works is that their team that's hundreds of books each month in order to select a curated selection of five to seven titles that you then get to choose from so you can spend less time researching and more time reading. So one of the reasons why I love Book of the Month is that they have the best price for new release hardcover fiction and you can get your first book for just $9.99 with my code which is Monica and I also love Book of the Month because they are zero risk. So if you subscribe and there's a month where you're just not interested in any of the options you're able to just skip that month and you won't be charged. And the book that I picked for the month of September is Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen and this one honestly I think would fit in probably very well with all the other books that I'm going to be talking about in this video because it just sounds super whimsical and cozy and comforting and atmospheric. This book takes place off the coast of I think North or South Carolina? South Carolina. Um, off the coast of South Carolina and we follow this woman who is going to take over her uh, deceased mother's apartment and her apartment is in this like cobblestone almost magical building and while she's there she meets all of these neighbors who are from all different sorts of walks of life and very big characters in and of themselves um, but then a mysterious murder happens while she's there and she gets swept up into the mystery of it so yeah this one definitely sounds just very magical whimsical but also with like a little bit of darkness to make it the perfect sort of autumn pick so very excited for this one if you want to see all of book of the month's picks for the month of September I will have them linked down below but without further ado let's dive in to the cozy books that I am recommending. So the first book I want to talk about is going to be one of my most recent reads and that is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater and oh my goodness I love 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 love, love this book. So this is a Regency fantasy historical fiction novel. It has been compared to Howl's Moving Castle meets Pride and Prejudice and I honestly think that that is a very accurate description for this book. Now I do want to say that it's definitely a lighter book. It's a romance. It's not like a super dense fantasy or regency uh, comedy of manners type of book by any means. But as someone who has read quite a few books that have compared themselves to those two things, I feel like this is the best version of that that I've ever read. Like I think that this does the sort of wholesome romance style in a way that I've never read before um, that like just completely captured me and had me giggling like <laughs> like a 12 year old. Like I was just reading this book and I was like oh my gosh Elias. <laughs> Um, I guess I should talk about what this book is about. So in this book we follow Dora who has been cursed by a fairy lord to only have half a soul and this has caused a lot of issues in her everyday life because she struggles to feel a lot of emotions and this often causes her to also allow people to like kind of walk all over her um, and for her to like not go after the things that she wants because she struggles to really tap into the feelings of things that she wants or the, the yeah the feeling of wanting things in the first place and so she is our heroine and her 
cousin is going into London to try and seek a husband and she is tagging along and they're like best friends and yeah that's sort of where the the story takes off and in London she meets the Lord Sorcier and he is a very very curmudgeonly lord <laughs> who just does not get along with anyone he's very like angry at the world and you know it's very like anti-military anti-war and it's just sort of like very frustrated with the aristocracy and all of that and yeah they meet and it's definitely like the kind of thing where they butt heads a lot and she really um, helps question him and like get him out of his shell also and yeah I just I love I loved their relationship watching it like sort of grow over the book I also just like loved watching Dora as a character girl I feel like she was so full of life for me with romances I often struggle to really connect with the heroines and to just care I guess about their journey and their plights and I never felt that with Dora. I cared so deeply about her and the people around her and the causes that she was that she also cared about and I love that this book also like talked about those things and at the end of the day it also is just like the coziest most whimsical romantic story that I highly highly recommend and I feel like it would be the perfect pick for like end of summer early fall because it just has those like perfect vibes. I feel like anything with fairies just like reminds me of like changing seasons so yeah would definitely recommend picking this up. The next one I have is one that I do talk about a lot I will not lie um, but it's one of my favorite books of all time and I haven't talked about it very recently so forgive me but it's Nevermore by Jessica Townsend and this series is just everything to me. It is I think like like the best middle grade series I've ever read. Like out of all of the middle grade books, this one, it's just next level. It's just so good. So in this book we follow Morgan Crow and Morgan is this little girl who everyone blames all of their problems on. She is cursed and blamed, yeah, blamed for all of the problems that happen in this town and she's also prophesied to die on her 11th birthday. But instead of that happening, she ends up getting swept away by this mysterious ginger man, Jupiter North, to the land of Nevermore. And in Nevermore, she is put into these trials in order to join the secret wondrous society. And yeah, I just, oh, this book has everything. It has secret societies. It has trials. It has amazing friendships. It has found family. It has a hotel that people live in with like amazing characters. And oh, it's just so good and it's like because it takes place over like the course of a year you get like all these different seasons and oh it's just everything it's so good it's so whimsical and fun this first one is definitely a lot lower stakes than the next books in the series and like I feel like as the series is, go is going on those stakes get bigger and bigger whereas these this one I feel like still fits into the cozy vibe this book has everything that I feel like so many people are looking for and if you haven't read it yet I implore you to pick it up this autumn oh I would compare this book to if you took Willy Wonka meets Doctor Who meets maybe like a little bit a little splash of Harry Potter that's this book you know but without like JK Rowling being awful this one highly recommend the next book I want to talk about is another one that I recently read and that is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry and I again really enjoyed this one super wholesome in this one we follow Viv who is an orc barbarian who has spent her life fighting these battles, killing people, and she just wants out of that life. She wants a calmer, simpler path. And so she opens a coffee shop. And this is about her opening her coffee shop, building up the coffee shop, finding customers, finding friends, finding a found family, all the things we love. And it's just so lovely. I actually read this while playing the game Coffee Talk. I have a whole vlog in which I do that. So if you haven't watched that, you should watch that and it was honestly like peak experience because coffee talk is like such a cozy fun game also about a like magical coffee shop <laughs> so they just fit together really well now I will say that I don't think you can get the physical copy anymore of this book because they are publishing it like traditionally and this is the self-published version I will if I'm able to find it I will link it in the description box below but the audiobook is available and the audiobook is also delightful. I believe Travis Baldry actually narrates it himself. So 
an option if you are impatient and you want to read it right now the audiobook might be the option for you. Next on my list is The Rules and Regulations for Mediating Myths by F.T. Lukens. This book is so cute and so fun. If you are a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you should definitely pick this book up. Especially the early seasons where it's a little bit lower stakes, definitely pick this one up. In this book we follow this boy who is he needs a part-time job and so he gets a job with this I don't know if he's like a wizard or some something like that and this guy is like this sort of what's the word I'm looking for like you know doctor the doctor from like back to the future kind of like that sort of personality like just sort of larger than life mad scientist vibes except a wizard and so he gets a job with him and his job is to just sort of like stop these mythological creatures from outing themselves to the world as existing and so it leads to a lot of like really fun hijinks and also he's by and he's having this sort of like burgeoning romance with another boy in his school and it's just so wonderful and fun if you are a lover of coming of age stories but you also want something a little bit a little bit whimsical a little bit supernatural this is a perfect one to pick up i dream of it one day being adapted because i think it would just make such a fun show or film my next pick is the scandalous sisterhood of prick willow place by julie berry and this one takes place at an all-girls school and it is a bit of a cozy mystery and it's absolutely so fun we follow this group of girls who attend and live at this school and their headmistress is just not the nicest person and is having this dinner with her I think brother and she ends up dying or they both end up dying and the sisters or all the girls at the school are like well what do we do they kind of like are now getting a taste for freedom and they don't want to give that up so they decide to hide the bodies and want to try and figure out who committed the murder without alerting authorities and just like ridiculous hijinks is ensue from there so you have this like really fun story of sisterhood and that like element of sort of the uptight society and then you also have like the cozy mystery element of like trying to figure out who killed these two people and also why i would say if you like the idea of like a madeline murder mystery you should pick up this one. So the next one is a book that was actually I feel like a really big thing a few years ago and I haven't really heard anything about this series in such a long time so I just kind of wanted to bring it back onto people's radar um, and also onto my radar because I'm thinking about rereading the series and that is Soulless by Gail Carriger. I would say if you've read Half a Soul already this one might be a great one to pick up because in this one we follow Alexia who is born without a soul so completely without a soul in this one not even half uh, so she's born without a soul and she's uh, also a spinster and she's just sort of like annoyed by all of society you know like she's there but she's also like very much above it all um and she ends up meeting lord macken macken never really knew how to say that but he is a lord from scotland and he is also a werewolf if you want to fall into a supernatural regency london setting you should definitely read this one <laughs> it's really fun this one especially is like just really funny too i think more than any of the other books on this list like if you want a good laugh this one is really funny like alexia is just such a dry character and has like the best humor so it's just fun in that sense and also like the romance with lord mackin and like in general is just really fun to read because it's like she's not like swooning over him like they're very much like equal so that's always really fun but yeah definitely recommend this one it's a little bit of an older pick but it was so fun when i first read it and i feel like it's sort of fallen to the wayside in recent years so just wanted to mention it in this video all right so now it is time to get to the more creepy books on my suggested reads list the first book i want to talk about is the memory theater by karen tidwell and this book i would recommend for anyone who wants a sort of dark fairy tale vibe this autumn so in this book we follow two kids dora and thistle and they have been captured away by these people who live in a forest and they basically sap the life out of young children in order to live forever and repeat the same day over and over and over again and so this is their journey their story it very much gives like Hansel and Gretel vibes Brothers Grimm vibes I will say like this book is darker like 
there's like some icky stuff <laughs> that happens in this one. Like at the beginning, there are mentions of cannibalism. There are deaths in this one, like more like sad deaths. Like, you know, there are deaths in the other one, but I feel like they're this is gonna sound weird, more lighthearted. <laughs> and in this one, like you feel the gravitas of these deaths, if that makes sense. So yeah, I would say this one is darker, but if you want a dark fairy tale kind of story, this one is such a good one. And I don't really ever hear anything about this book. So yeah, I just want to put this on people's radar because I feel like this is a vibe that a lot of people are looking for um, and would really enjoy if they just knew it existed. This next one I've been an advocate for since before it even came out and I love that it has finally, I feel like over the past few months, gotten um, the attention that it deserves, but I'm still going to mention it because it deserves it, and that is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. And this is a Dracula retelling. We follow one of Dracula's wives. It is an epistolary novel. At the beginning of the book, we know that she has killed Dracula, and the rest of the book is really her writing these letters to him and recounting their life together. And this one is, again, it's much darker, super atmospheric. I would say if you are a fan of, like, Crimson Peak, like just sort of like really gothic stories, this is a great one to pick up. It is not a vampire romance novel. It's like the opposite of that. It's a, it's a story about power imbalances and abuse, but also a story of life. If you're looking for something that's just going to let you really get into that gothic mindset for autumn, this is the one that you should pick up. This next one I'm going to recommend for all of my people out there who are Coraline fans. If you love Coraline and you want a book that's going to make you feel kind of like how Coraline made you feel, look no further than The Cavendish Home for Boys and Girls. So this book is by Claire Legrand and it's basically about this creepy school in this town where children go in and they do not come out. They go missing and this one girl, her friend gets taken and she is trying to figure out what the heck is happening at this school. And that's all I want to say because I don't want to give anything away. But if you like creepy schools, Coraline vibes, like this book is the one for you. I could totally see it getting like a similar adaptation to Coraline with like the sort of stop motion style. It's just, oh, it's so spooky and eerie, but in a way that's like not too intense. Like it is, this one is a middle grade novel, but it's like creepy in the way that like middle grade often is that I think sometimes disarms adults in how creepy it can be but that children find so fun at least I did so yeah I definitely recommend this one it's super fun but also legitimately creepy like I <laughs> I found it occasionally like pretty creepy so you know don't give it to the real young ones and then lastly I can't make a book of fall cozy picks without including The Diviners by Libba Bray. Come on, who would I be? Who would I be if I didn't include this book in a recommendations list? I simply wouldn't be me, that's for sure. Anyways, <laughs> if you don't know what The Diviners is, which if you watch my channel a lot, <laughs> you're probably rolling your eyes at me, but if you don't know what The Diviners is, it's the best YA series to have ever been written personally. I don't know, but I actually say the best ever. It's one of the best, that's for sure. This book takes place in 1920s New York City, and it is the ultimate, ultimate spooky, creepy vibes. There's secret societies, there's paranormal abilities, there's angst, there's yearning, <laughs> there's everything in this one. In this book, we follow a group of teens who live in New York City, and over the course of the book, each of them are coming into, discovering, hiding, freaking out about these divine abilities that they have been given. And it affects their lives in different ways. They all come from different walks of life. And there is a legitimately creepy ghost story also interwoven throughout this book. And at its core, this series is such a fantastic, fantastic like metaphor and look at the history of America and America's own ghosts and also just ultimate spooky, creepy vibes. Ugh, if you love history, if you love paranormal stories, this is just the perfect read. So if you haven't read this yet, please do, because it's so good. <laughs> so yeah, those are all of the books that I am recommending for anyone looking to have the ultimate cozy reading experience this autumn. I'd love to hear from you all, though. What are some of the coziest books that you've read or the books that made you feel the coziest while you read them? Let me know in the comments down below. And then if 
you're watching this video and you've already read all these books or you want some more recommendations, you can turn to the comments for more. But yeah, thank you all so, so much for watching. Thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. And I will talk to you all next time. Bye!